Hi people, this is Daniel from Devil and Sons Guitars here, and today I'm going to talk to you in depth about the bridge that you find on a Stratocaster guitar. So this video is going to be in a few different parts. I'm going to start by taking apart the bridge itself and looking at the individual elements of it and how they fit together and how they interact with each other, then going on to talking about how you would set up your bridge. But bear in mind that this is focusing just on the bridge for the setup. It works really well in conjunction with the other longer video I've made on how to set up a guitar in full, looking at how to set up the truss rod, the string action, the intonation, the pickup height, all of those things are important, but in that longer video, it just assumes a general bridge. This shows the details on this bridge and thinking about how to get it stable when you're tuning it up because it is a tremolo bridge. Now, some people set up their Stratocaster guitars so the bridge is screwed quite tight to the body, which means that when you push the tremolo arm, you only get to dive your strings so that the pitch of them goes lower and then returns to normal. But I'm also going to talk about how you can set up your bridge so it's floating. So as well as diving, you can pull up on it and the to notes will go up a tone or, or however much you want in pitch. If you do find this video useful, please do the general like and subscribe. But what's mostly useful for me is if you share this amongst your friends, different forums you're on, anyone that you know plays a Strat and might find this useful. You can also follow me on the different social medias. But for now, let's get on by looking at how the bridge works. Here then we have the sustain block. This is the part that isn't really visible on the guitar because it's inside the guitar, inside a cavity. But the top part here makes contact with the part of the bridge you do see. I'll talk about how they fit together in a moment. And then the bottom part here has holes in it. Some of the holes are for the springs to go into like this. We'll talk about the springs a bit later. And some of the holes are where the guitar string actually goes through. So the string will thread in through here with a ball end at the back going through here. The ball end will catch in here to hold it in place. The string will come through the top, through the top of the bridge here, and then straight along the body of the guitar, along the neck and to the nut. Then the top of the bridge, like this, has a number of holes in it. The holes at the front are the holes where it is screwed down to the body of the guitar. Now, some versions of this bridge don't have the holes here because they will have a little notch, a little knife edge on each side where there will be two pivots that it will come up against to help it attach to the guitar body. It will basically be pressure from the strings going along the body to the neck that pull the bridge into those two pivots. But this one, the standard one, doesn't have pivots. It has six screws. We'll talk about them later and talk about them in particular in the setup. This set of holes here are the holes where the string's going to come through. So remember, the strings come through the bottom of the sustain block up through the top where it's screwed onto here through these over the saddles into the neck of the guitar and the tuning pegs and then these holes here are what's going to screw it down in a moment to the um, sustain block and then we've got the last hole here which is where the vibrato arm the tremolo arm itself is going to screw into but that's what we're going to do at the very end of the setup um, the holes at the back are where the screws go that attach into the saddles and hold the saddles in place. Let's just screw this together and then we can have a look at the saddles. So I'll line up the three holes where the screws go with the three holes here and that lines up the rest of the holes, the hole for the vibrato arm and the hole for where the strings are going to come through. And then I have a screw, well it's actually a bolt not a screw, that goes onto this as with anything, when I'm putting multiple screws in, I tend to put them all in a bit loose. And then once they're all in place and holding it in place, I'll then tighten them up one at a time. If you tighten one up first, it doesn't allow much budge if you haven't lined it, everything up correctly. So here we have the saddle. The saddle has a hole in the middle here, which allows the strings to come through when they come up through the sustain block, through the base of the bridge, through here, over this curve at the front of the bridge, which has got like a little V notch in it. And then along the body of the guitar, the neck, etc. At the back of the saddle is a hole which is threaded, ready for a screw to go through it. 
and it's got these two holes at the front, which is where these small grub screws go. And they're what we adjust to adjust the string height. Now this bridge set actually has different size grub screws. And the reason for that is, and you'll know this if you've watched my full inter setup video, when you're changing the action, the string height of your guitar, some strings are higher than others off of the fretboard surface. So for example, the thicker a string is, so the bass strings, the higher it is off of the guitar neck. So the smaller grub screws are used for the high strings, like the open, the, the top E, and the longer ones are used for the bass strings, like the bass E. This one actually has four saddles which have this size and two which have this size. So I'd be using this for the E and B. So I'm just going to put two of the grub screws for the same size into the saddle, screw them in from the top, so you've got the little indent where your Allen key can go in the top of the grub screw and screw them down. Now at this stage, when I'm putting all of my bridge back together, I'm just going to screw them in so they come slightly out of the bottom. So you see it's about halfway in, halfway out. And make sure they're equal on both sides of each saddle. And I'm actually going to set all the saddles to roughly the same height when I first start putting it all back together for the very start of my setup. As I mentioned, you turn these to adjust the height of the string. The further these screws are into the saddle, the further it's going to push up off of the surface of the saddle, of the bridge, and therefore the higher the string height will be. So you can just see here, as the grub screw goes through the saddle, pushes down on the surface of the bridge. So as you tighten it, it will push the screws in further and push the saddle up, therefore adjusting the string height because the strings come over the top here. Or when you pull the grubs back further, you can see the saddle is going to sit lower against the bridge. So each saddle is held in place with the screw that comes through the back of the bridge plate. But it doesn't just screw on, because if you just screwed it on there, it would easily have some give unless you screwed it all the way down. So what we have in between the back of the saddle and the inner raised bit of the back of the bridge is a spring. And that means when we tighten this screw, depending on how tight you've got it, loose or tight, the spring is always going to be there to push against the saddle and stop it slipping. Now, depending on how tight you tighten this screw, depends on how far backwards the saddle is going to go. So as I tighten this, you'll see the saddle moves backwards. Now, why would you want to move the saddle backwards and forwards? Well, that's to do with the intonation. Basically, as you pull the saddle backwards, the very tip of the saddle here, where the string makes contact, moves backwards and forwards. And the length of the string is measured from the nut to that exact point where it touches the ridge of the front of the saddle. That's the string length. And the string length is very important when you set the intonation. So basically making sure your guitar string stays in tune all along the fretboard. So you might have it open, tuned to E, for example, but if the string length isn't exactly correct, you'll find when you play the 12th fret an octave on that E, it's either sharp or flat. But if your string length is exactly the right length, then when you play the octave, your note will be exactly in tune, as will all other notes along the scale of the fretboard. Here you can see the saddle spring and the saddle, I've been calling it a screw, but it's actually a bolt, you can see, flat end, so it bolts in. One very important thing to note about this bridge plate is there's a slight angle at the front of it. Let's see if I can catch that in the light. You can see here that, that bevel there. That's really important, we'll talk about that later on when I'm setting up the bridge. Now to look at the final components of the bridge, we're going to look at the reverse side. So if you turn the guitar upside down, most strats have a cavity that's covered with a sort of scratch plate material rectangle, which if you unscrew, you'll see the claw, the springs, and the bottom part 
of the bridge. So you'll see the sustain block here. Now, not everyone has a cover on it and some might have more springs, but essentially the claw here has these hooks on the front that the springs attached to and two holes here that these screws go through and then screw into the body of the guitar. And initially you don't want it screwed all the way down into the body. You want them out quite a bit. That will help you put the springs on. And later on is tightening these that changes the tension on the strings because as you tighten these, if you imagine this spring, one end attached to the claw, one end attached to the bridge. As you tighten it, it's gonna pull the string apart. I can't do that with my bare hands. It's gonna pull the string apart. So it's gonna add more tension to it. And as you loosen the screw, so you push the claw back towards the bridge and the sustain block, the spring is gonna compress, so stretch and compress. And that's gonna change the tension. You can just see on here, there's a hook. That hook just goes into these places. Now, this saddle has got space for one, two, three, four, five, six springs. The claw has got hooks for one, two, three, four, five springs. I'm only gonna put three on it. Three is the standard, I think. But the reason you might change the number of springs you have is to do with how responsive you want your guitar to be. And the way this basically works is using a classic bit of physics called Hooke's Law. So here's the bridge. We've got the strings coming over the top and the springs coming from the bottom. To get the balance of the bridge, you're gonna have the tension, the force in the springs at the bottom, equaling and balancing the force in the strings at the top. If the strings were tighter than the springs at the bottom, the bridge would do that. If the springs were tighter, the bridge would do this. But you're gonna balance them out. So now imagine that the strings at the top are all in tune and at the correct tension because they're all in tune and they're balanced out by the springs at the bottom. Now, if you have three springs on the bottom, the force that they are applying to counter the force of the strings at the top is going to be spread equally between them, which means they're going to stretch a certain amount as they're pulling back on the strings. Now, if you took one away, it's going to need exactly the same amount of, of strength to pull against the strings above, but this time there's only two of them. So they're going to have to stretch a bit more than if you had three. So two of them are doing more work than the three of them. And likewise, one of them is doing more work than if you had three of them. Now, what we know from Hooke's law is that the movement that the spring has is gonna be proportional to the amount of strength, amount of energy that it's putting in. So as we push our tremolo down, it's gonna to have to move the tremolo a lot more to make the same adjustment as all three springs being in place. So let's say we wanted to push down on the tremolo bar to change the note by one semitone. Well, the movement we're gonna to have to make with three springs might just be very slight. With two springs, it's gonna to have to be a bit more because these springs are being stretched more, they're working harder. And if it's one, it's gonna be even more that you have to pull on it in order to get the um, same semitone change or tone change in the, the note. Now, you never normally would have one on, I would suggest three, and you'd be working up from three, three, four, five. It was just easier for an example to talk about three, two, and one, because that's what I had here. So basically, start with your free springs when you're playing. If you find that your response from this isn't enough, if you've got to push too far as far as you're concerned to get the change in the note that you want, put another spring on, then you won't have to push quite as far. One last thing about the claw is it's soldered to a wire that comes from the cavity that contains the controls, and that's an earth wire, ground wire, so that this is grounded. And that means the strings are grounded because the string, this attaches to the springs, which attach to the sustain block, which is touching the strings. It's also touching the bridge, which is touching the saddles, which is also touching the strings. So that means they're grounded, which helps stopping the hum that you might get otherwise. In this video, I'll be using this strat, which is one I've just done a paint job on for a client called Chris. It's a very unique paint job with some extra 
elements added on. I've got a whole other video on that. As you know, I do make paint jobs for people and customize guitars. You can see much more of them on my different social medias, and I'm also always putting up videos about them too. So if you're putting the springs on and you find that the claw is too tight, too far in, so you can't actually stretch your spring by hand, a quick tip is to use a screwdriver, a flat end screwdriver, you can put it over the claw and hook the spring on like that. So I'm going to start with the lower sixth string and I'll put it in here. I'm leaving the back cover off for the time being because I'm going to need access to the springs and the screws that hold the claw in place. And then once you're set up, the tremolo bar's got the screw part in it that goes through the um, hole on the bridge plate into the threaded part of the sustain block. You screw it in, you can leave it loose, depends how tight you want it, but I would have it loose. You can play and it drops back into place ready for you. Now, I've got the strings on now and the springs on the back. And what you can see here is the bridge is slightly raised at the back, which means I could tighten the springs below and that would pull this down so it touched the body. Now, a lot of people have their springs set up so that the bridge here is nice and flat against the body. And that means when you use the tremolo arm, you can't push back to raise the strings because the bridge is already as far back as it will go. All you can do is push down to lower the note, like that, and then it will return to its resting place against the body of the guitar. If like this there's a slight raise, you can push back a bit and get um, the note to go higher. So if you just want it to go with the bridge screwed down to the body, so all you can do is the dive bombing, then tighten your springs now so that is level. But what I'm actually going to do is set the bridge up so it's floating, which means you can go both directions with the tremolo arm, which means that the bridge has to be slightly raised from the body. Now, just before I do that, I'm going to show you one other thing, which is for this today, I'm just going to start by using the two end screws, not all six screws of the bridge, the two end screws to screw it down. But if someone had screwed all six down, all the way down, so I'm just going to screw the end ones down to show you. What that does because of that tilt at the front, if they were all down, you're going to end up with your bridge in this position, slightly raised at the back. So you'll have your bridge raised slightly at the back like that because all the screws are down. It, for some bridges, the angled part at the front of the bridge that I showed you before might be even stronger than this. This one's quite subtle, which would mean your strings would be like this. It does mean that when you're pushing down with the bar, you're working against the screws. It's not a very good thing to do. You're basically going to um, risk damaging the screws, damaging the bridge. So these always need to be backed off a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and back off all the middle ones more than I need to. And then just work with the outer two, which I'm going to back off very slightly now. Just a few turns. And if we come back to the side view, you can see the bridge is raised here equally all the way along. Now, easily the best way to set up your floating bridge of any kind is to have it fixed while you're doing all of the tightening the strings, tuning it, setting the intonation, setting the string height, etc. And then to release it back into its floating mode. Now to make something like this fixed, what we need to do is block that gap under there, almost like it's the bridge is touching the body, and then tighten the springs underneath. So it's pulled down really hard against what we're blocking it with. So I'm going to slide something under there, which is solid, but not so hard it's going to damage the actual body of the guitar. So I'm going to push down on the tremolo bar, slide a piece of corrugated card underneath, which actually just gets compressed, but it will stop the lollipop stick that I'm putting on from marking on the body. There we are. And then here on the reverse, I'm just going to tighten the screws so the claw is pulled quite tight. And then when I'm back here on the front, you can see that the bridge is raised slightly. Now, the really important thing to remember is the reason we are making this 
a fixed bridge. So these bits are here and the springs underneath, they are tight enough that whatever we do to the strings above in the process of tuning it up and setting it up, they're not gonna become any stronger than the springs underneath. So they're not gonna pull the bridge up. The bridge is always gonna stay in that place. The reason we do that is as soon as you change the pitch of the string when you're tuning it, as soon as you change the height of the string, as soon as you change the length of the string, if you change the truss rod at all, what you're doing is changing the tension in these strings. So if it wasn't fixed, the bridge would be pulled up against the springs. So every change you make would mean all the other strings would start going into a different pitch out of tune because you're changing the tension above and the tension below is staying the same. The fact the tension below is so strong is what makes it fixed. Once it's all set up, we can remove this and then correctly adjust the tension underneath. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do a full setup on this guitar following my full setup video. We don't really need to show you that now because I've got the whole other video about it. But then we're gonna come back to this guitar and look at what I then do with the bridge. But don't forget the string height is adjusted by turning these screws. So anti-clockwise, loosening the screws, lowers the saddle, lowers the string height. So when you're adjusting the string height, you're changing these grub screws. And one thing to note is you want them like this to be the same size, the two grub screws, the same height on both sides of the saddle. If one was higher, you'll see that the saddle starts to tilt and you don't want it at an angle, you want it as flat as possible. So you're adjusting the height of these, adjusting the string height. And the string length is changed by tightening the screw at the back. The tighter this screw goes, the more it pulls back, the longer the string will get. If I loosen it, the saddle will move forward, the string will get shorter. Okay, this is really hard to film, but the way I'm going to pull this out is actually I'm going to start releasing the tension on the springs underneath by making the screws that hold the claw in place longer. So I'm going to loosen the screws, that's going to loosen the tension underneath, and that should make this drop once the spring tension on the top is slightly stronger than the spring tension underneath, this will drop. And then I'll know that I've got the balance more or less correct. So let's take this out from underneath very slowly. It's a very odd angle to film. I'm just turning each screw one at a time, a very slight turn. You don't have to use cardboard to block it and a, a lollipop stick. You could use anything, like I said, that's the right thickness for what you want and isn't going to mark. So don't use a metal ruler, for example. That's nearly there. There we go. And the last change to make is I'm gonna play the notes and check they're in tune. I can tell that it's all dropped about a whole tone in me unscrewing that. So that was because of the give in the cardboard. So I'm just gonna re-tighten this and because it was in tune at the right tension, if I tighten this, so my note goes bass note, which is a D at the moment, goes back up to E. I should know that all the rest should be in tune as they were before, but that involves me turning these equally. Nearly there. There we are. An in tune guitar where the tremolo will allow you to dive and also go up. And the final job here is to tighten the middle screws so they match the outer ones, but that they don't pull down any further and pull the bridge down any further. So really most of the work should be done by the outer screws and the middle ones don't really need to apply any pressure to the bridge plate itself.
Great, well thanks for watching. Don't forget this just focused on the bridge on the Stratocaster. I've got videos on other bridges, but they all go in conjunction with my longer video on how to set up your guitar, which I'll leave a link for in the description of the YouTube comments here. Um, don't forget you can support me by buying merch like this um, through my Redbubble account. I've also got mugs, very important to have your tea when you're doing your setup. Um, you can follow me on social media, etc. One thing I'd like to point out though is if you've got tips on how you set up your Stratocaster bridge, please leave them in the comments below for other people to, to read when they've come to watch this video. And if you are watching this video now, do check out those comments in case there are some tips that you would find useful yourself. I love the comment section of the YouTube videos because it leads to really good conversations about guitars and about very specific elements that you might not find elsewhere. But once again, thanks for watching and until next time, happy strumming.